Do you feel the pressure to be a perfect parent? If you do, you are definitely not alone because a recent study with 28,000 Arab mothers found that 87% of them felt that pressure to be the quote-unquote perfect mother. And 90% of them blaming social media. So where do you think that pressure comes from? We'd love to hear from you. You can be anonymous if you prefer. And one of the men behind that study, Ahmed Abu Zanad, is with us. Author, strategist and the founder of advisory firm Native. He's in the studio to unpick this data, give his take as, a, well, not a parent, which I find really interesting. So I feel like that distance is actually incredibly valuable. Ahmed, tell us a little bit about why this study came about in the first place. Yeah, so not being a parent myself, but part of the job I do is being a student of uh, human behavior because we work with uh, brands, uh, helping them strategize so that they can uh, target their audiences, but more importantly, identify these tensions and play a more meaningful role in, 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 in people's lives mm -hmm. beyond selling products, beyond pushing products down, down their uh, throats. And whenever we work with a brand that is targeting mothers and we try to unearth these insights, these tension points, uh, starting, I would say, eight years ago, this, what I'd like to call the fear of underparenting, keeps com gets co coming oh, up. Oh, the fear of underparenting. That, uh, that might be the name of my memoir. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that, you know how fo FOMO real. became so popular, yeah. the fear of missing out? And I'm like, OK, I'd like to call it FOP and I'd like it to just, you know, pick up. So I'm here and I'm hoping it will get as popular. So 28,000 mothers responding to, to this survey. And as I said, the vast majority of them feeling like they've got this pressure to be the perfect mum and dad. I mean, I feel that pressure yes. all the time and I'm not sure where it comes from. I think maybe partly my own family, maybe myself. Yeah certainly social media advertising social yes. constructs you know where do you feel like that the, what were they saying that perhaps yes so uh, part of the question was did you feel that an older generation your mom did it did she feel the same pressure and the majority said no it's, no. it's just it's it's recent and oh, it, it starts so with interesting. what's interesting it starts with the term parenting so the term parenting was introduced to the dictionary in the early, I would say, 20th century. And it became so popular only in the 70s when thinkers, authors and journalists wanted to make a big deal out of it. So the, the issue started there, which is the influx of information and the conflicting information. And it started in the 70s, and then the internet came about, and everyone has an opinion on the internet. So today, if you go on Amazon and you search for a book on parenting, imagine how many results you get. You get 60,000 uh, books. Oh, what? I mean, if, and then and then they'd be like, you might also like this white noise machine to help your child sleep. Exactly. <laughs> and this is Amazon, it's books. Try Googling it. Google blogs on parenting, can you guess how much, how many results? Thir 31 million, oh 500,000. So I know you so have one of those blogs. Yeah, it's yeah, one, yeah. one of the better ones I'd like to add. <laughs> yeah. No, but I feel like that point of comparison in previous <coughs> generations is so key because yes. I'm sure my mum, you know, she would look around her friendship group and she would ask them for advice. She would say, oh, you know, how's, how's Deborah coping with, you know, the, the sleepless nights or how's, you know, Sue disciplining her children? Whereas now we've got, endless people yes. to compare ourselves to yes Th that's that's one thing so the, the the kind of advice you get from people close to you who have been through this uh, before it comes with you know no agendas mm -hmm. uh, if i have a blog and i want to promote that blog this is the agenda if i'm an influencer and i want to promote and get more followers this uh, that's the agenda and the other agenda of influencers is to eventually sell products Absolutely. Th through their influence. And then presumably, as you said, working with brands, are they looking to, this is very cynical, um, exploit our insecurities, you know, by thinking, okay, they're worried about not feeding their children well. So this is the image that we're going to present and we're going to hope that they think our product is the answer to them being the perfect parent. Yeah, it's when it comes to brands, it starts with short sightedness that they just want to push the product. They don't mm. want to play a bigger role for, for the brand to build that kind of connection. That's that's one, one part of the issue. The second issue is marketers are growingly becoming more detached from their consumers. So they they have so, so they have a vast vast uh, uh, resources and sources of data on their consumers. But this data is mostly their media consumption. 
you know, the websites they've been on, what did they buy before? So they they assume that they can draw this image of their consumers, but they only know them as consumers, as shoppers, as online shoppers. They don't know the, you know, the human yeah, instance that, that lies beneath. And because they are so detached, they are creating ads that mothers are not relating to. Mm-hmm. So another study showed that 82% of Arab mothers don't see themselves in the ads they watch. They see their mothers. They see the grandmother. So this is how detached marketers are becoming from Arab mothers. So that's interesting then. Tell us a little bit about where you would like this to change, I guess. And do you think that could ultimately affect the bottom line for a lot of companies if they were a lot more real and they did tap into the very real struggles, but also celebrations, the good and the bad of parenthood? Yes. So it it, it comes at two fronts. One is the brand itself. It needs to have a higher purpose and play a more valuable role, mm-hmm. which is to resolve the tensions that a mother will go through. And this takes, you know, genuine, authentic effort to really understand these tensions. And then the content that they come out with. And that's that's what we do at Native, is to ensure that a brand is native. And native means the role is native to her life, but the content has a native fit within the ecosystem where she encounters that content at the right time, at the right uh, at the right place. I can tell you the right time for an exhausted parent is, well, 3 a.m. And you know what? There, there have been studies into this about um, automated mail-outs for companies, for retailers going, if you email them between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., chances are they're feeling vulnerable, they're feeling tired. This is going to be seen as either a solution to sleepless nights or lack of time or looking and feeling better. Yes. And it's a quick click. Yes, <laughs> we, we've got a lot more judgment during during the waking hours. Yeah, and and uh, adding to this, you know, it's we we always try to tell brands that people don't really buy what you do; they buy why you do it. And if you really reveal that why, that you're really trying to resolve attention, mm-hmm. then you know they, they they buy into you before they buy your product. So stop being short sighted and just pushing the product and try to take a step back and identify this higher purpose. Lovely message from Alison here saying, yours is one of the few mum accounts that I read. Thank you. As it's honest and down to earth rather than unrealistic life that so so few can maintain or even aspire to. I'm so done with fake lives on social media and your posts generate honest discussion and solutions. Thank you. That honestly means a lot to me because I just said to you off air, I started writing about parenting when my daughter was about six months old. And, mm. you know, having kids in Dubai can feel really fraught. You know, you've got a lot of people with a lot of money. You've got people spending 5,000 dirhams on baby Dior dresses. And I was like, that is not me. What is there for me and people like me? And I'm so happy to have that message, honestly, because I feel like it can. when you are not real, it doesn't serve anybody. You're not living your authentic life. People look at you and think, oh, how does she do that? Without saying, you know, I have a nanny. I've got a supportive husband. You know, all, all of these things behind yeah. the scenes because it doesn't suit the image that you're trying to portray. So I think what you're doing is, is is great and we need more mothers to do what you're doing because, you know, in all other aspects of life, if we talk FOMO versus FOP, you know, FOMO is, yeah, a, a, a sense, a, a tension, you know, an anxiety that uh, my social life is not active enough. But it doesn't go down into my identity, you know, mm-hmm. because, okay, I should be more socially active. That's, that's, that's no problem. It's a small anxiety. But when it comes to motherhood, that's, that's, it, 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 it hits within the identity. Mm-hmm. So I am, you know, at ease not being the most social, but no mother can be at ease feeling inadequate as a, as a, as a mother. So when you do that and you hit that anxiety around mothers, it's so personal. It's so instinctive mm-hmm. that it's 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 you know it's it's more real. But okay, you can post content on social media where it's too perfect, it's too flashy, and all of that. But the anxieties you're creating is something people can live with. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a weekend where I was at home and everyone f- had had a blast. Okay, I'll get over it. You know, next weekend I'll I'll, I'll uh, compensate for that. But motherhood, it's day in, day out, it's, hour in, hour out. And it's you, visceral. Yes. It really, really is. So it's really interesting to think that how brands are looking to identify some of those pain points with parents. And I really hope that we might see a bit of a shift in the future because, yeah, if I have to go to see one beaming parent producing the most incredible meal to their beaming child that just eats it, I'm... Um, Plates will be smashed, Ahmed. Thank you yeah. so, so much for your time thank you, today. Thank you, thank you. Really, that. really interesting to hear what happens behind the scenes when it comes to marketing and research. So, yes, if you are one of the 87% of the mums who don't feel like 
Yeah. You are the perfect parent. You are far from alone. Thank you for joining us from native Ahmad Abuzanad, author, strategist and the founder of that advisory firm. It's Afternoons with me, Helen Farmer.